Hello, podcast family. I'm your host, Jojo Dawson, and welcome to Voices of the New Era. Tonight, we have a very, very special show for you. We've got some of our closest friends in the world, Jeff and Michelle McFarland. I got to tell you about Jeff, and I, I honestly <laughs> think we have probably traveled over 100,000 miles together, and I bet it would be safe to say we've been in over 500 prayer meetings together and just uh, an amazing couple. We've been running with them for, for years, but I'm just going to let them tell you about what all they've got going on. And, and before I do, I got, I got a plug real quick. Jeff and Michelle, they publish all of our books. They do all of our websites. So if you've been praying, Lord Jesus, I need somebody to help me with a book. I need somebody to help me with the website. Your search is over. The Lord has answered your prayers, and they're going to tell you a little bit about their self and then also about how they can bless you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, like Joe said, we have, we've been running together for many, many years. Uh, in fact, it's, it's been about 16 years that we've been running together and just honored to be here, honored to, to run alongside uh, Joe and Autumn and their family and to see God do amazing things. But like Joe said, we do, uh, we have a, our business called McFarland Creative. And what McFarland Creative is, is we, we facilitate, what we want to do is facilitate what God has placed inside of you. The things that, that God's placed inside of you, whether it be a book or whether it's ministry, and we help you creatively get it out into the world. And, and so that's what we have kind of given our lives to and to see the kingdom of God established through websites, to see them established through books, and, and every word and every idea that God's placed inside of you creatively, uh, we help through graphics, books, and websites. We help get that out. So uh, that's one of the things we do. We're also leaders at, at Roar Church, Texarkana, and, and been a, running alongside, uh, like I said, just to see God establish himself in our region and ultimately in the nation. All right. Well, I've got some questions. And Jeff and Michelle, they serve as like some of our teaching pastors at Roar and every Sunday that, that I'm not preaching and they're sharing, I, I just glean, I have wisdom. And Michelle, she helps some with the kids. And every time she teaches the kids, I ask my kids, what did you learn today? And they just go in depth about what they learned. And so they have such a strong teaching anointing upon their life. And so I've got a few questions that I am going to ask them that it's really going to benefit you. So here's the number one question. And this, there's a thousand things that we love about these two, but the number one thing that I love about Jeff and Michelle is their private time with God, their devotion to the Lord and how they articulate and explain their private walk with the Lord. So I'm going to ask both of you just to talk about your private time with God. Yes. Well, I think really for both of us and, and especially for me, that in my early days of knowing the Lord and following Jesus, that I was just hungry for the place of prayer, for corporate prayer, for private prayer, and really just to have that more of God that you find in the place of prayer. And that's really what has sustained my walk with God. It's what has um, unlocked the gifts that God has placed inside of me. And, and I think that we can only find who we are and what God has sent us to the earth to do in that place of prayer. And so I think one of our our life's missions is just to encourage people to get alone with God and find out what he's called you to do, find out who God has called you to be, and you find that in the place of prayer. Yeah, and I think along with that, one of the things for Michelle and I is, is the place of prayer and the place of consecration for ourselves is a non-negotiable. There's there's no gray area for us in, in allowing the presence of God to consume us as individuals to allow the presence of God to consume our house, for us to be people who have consecrated ourselves unto God, given ourselves to, to him fully, and to see him uh, ultimately move within our lives, because that's what we, we want to see. We not only want to see it uh, him do something in us, but we, we want to see him do it through us. And we know for, for that to be established, there has to be that consistent place of prayer. And I, I think consistency is the, is the word that, that I know that Michelle and I, we want to be known by. We want to be known by uh, that when people look at us, they know that there's consistency. 
and, and that's, that's how we try to approach our lives. That's how we try to live our lives is that everything that we do is it's consistent. When, when we uh, come to corporate prayer, corporate prayers are non-negotiable for us unless we're out of town on vacation, uh, which we, we do, we are in the place of corporate prayer. It's, it's not, it's not a thought. It's not an idea. It's not a, are we going to go tonight? It's just one of those things that we've established that we're going to do no matter what. So one, I think uh, corporate prayer is, is, is a must, uh, unless we're out of town, we're, we're, uh, uh, enjoying each other or, or on vacation or away. But uh, besides that, we're, we're, we always want to be found in the place of corporate prayer. And we always want to be found in the place of personal prayer. You know, a lot of people like to use the, the phrase um, on fire for God, or Michelle likes to talk about the Nazarites <laughs> or, you know, burning for the things of the Lord. You know, can y'all just explain what that really means and what that really looks like. Cause there's a lot of people say, Oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm serving the Lord, but then the Bible says every tree is known by its fruit. Yeah. But, but the, the two of you, you know, actually you're an example that we use a lot of times as a, a consecrated life and maybe even go into what a, a life of, of consecration and, and holiness looks like. Yeah. I, to, to even speak to that, I think um, I, I even wrote this down in my notes today. Uh, Romans 12 is, is a verse that, uh, or a chapter we, we always look to. It's because Paul lines out what it's like to, to uh, show your life as a living sacrifice and to not be conformed to this world, but, but be renewed by the transforming of your mind. And, and the way that that's done is through the, the place of personal prayer and consecration. But even, even on after that, in, in uh, I believe verse 11 and even 12, he says, never be lacking in your zeal and your spiritual fervor for God. And so he encouraged the Romans in, in that time to make sure that they were ones that were found on fire for God, just as Joe said. But after that, he said he gave them three charges and, and ultimately three, three things that he charged the Romans to do. And that was to be joyful, patient in all affliction and warfare, and to be faithful in prayer. And I think those three things are things that, that should uh, define each individual's lives and, and even the ones who, who find themselves consecrated. And, and uh, just to even add to that, um, Joe bringing up the, the Nazarites, that's something for years that uh, we've, we've uh, looked to and believed and, 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 and referencing there in number six, where the, the Nazarites were ones that consecrated themselves. And what I, what's really interesting is the Nazarites were, that was the, the vow that was given to the layman. They, that was saying that we've already established the priest, we've already established the prophets, and they, they know what's to be done to show themselves consecrated. But God gave, gave one more vow, and that was to the Nazarites, and that was to the layman of the hour to say, will you consecrate yourselves? Will you do at least these three things? And, and show yourself consecrated, fully fully giving yourself over to the Lord uh, so I can find a man in the earth that's, that's, that's giving himself fully to God uh, so I can see my will and my purpose enter into the earth. Yeah, and even just in number six, it's one of the first times in scripture that God, especially in the Old Testament, gives the people of God an invitation into something. There's that if at the beginning of the Nazarite vow, if any man or woman wants to set themselves apart and take the vow of the Nazarite and live that consecrated lifestyle, there's promises attached to that, that if you abstain from the legitimate pleasures of the world, of, of entertainment that may have compromise, of, of even just, um, just anything that you're letting in your ear gates or your eye gates, or even that you're outputting that if you give up those legitimate pleasures, things that aren't even deemed sin for the ultimate pleasure of knowing and following God and being used by God. And I think just that invitation to be a Nazarite, to be somebody set apart was something that marked us and that has continued to drive that consecration in, in private and that it's fueled that corporate expression of, of what God has placed in front of us to do. You know, I just even know that I personally believe that God is looking for a church ministries all throughout America and the nations of the world. And I really believe that going into what a lot of people call the new era, mainly, you know, Apostle Dutch Sheets and Chuck Pierce and Lena Voss, different people call the new era. 
as we're going into the new era, and it seems like the world, just the immorality of the world has even went up to a, a higher degree. Well, the church has to come against that. Yeah. The, the, as my apostle says, mamsy pamsy Christianity mm -hmm. is over. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's time for the true sons and daughters to manifest yeah. theirself. How do you see the church looking different going in to the new era? Let's say at the end of 2020 than it did at the beginning of 2020. Well, I, I think to speak to that, I think there's there's just no gray area involved. It, it, it's very black and white. Um, choose this day whom you'll serve. Yes. And and follow and go after the heart and the voice of God. And don't don't look to the world. Don't look to the things that, that may, may try to pull you, but really be a man that consecrated under the things of God. And, and that's one of the things that, that I, be, I, I truly believe in my heart that there's, there's, there's not a gray area. It, it's, it's very uh, black and white within the kingdom of God of, of, of either serving him or not. Um, and we, we know what Revelation says even about the lukewarm. And I don't want to be one that's found lukewarm. And even, even in this new era, I believe that there's a remnant that is rising up that is going to be that's already marked and being continually marked by the presence of God to see and usher in uh, a, just a, a mighty awakening and a mighty outpouring of his Holy Spirit upon his church and the, even ultimately the nation and the world. Yes, I, I believe that too. And I also believe that God is emboldening that remnant, those people, those kingdom minded people, those people that have been hungry and seeking after God in the midst of chaos and years of intercession and believing for revival and awakening. And I think that God is emboldening that remnant to prepare us for what's coming. And I really do believe that we are on the threshold of one of the greatest revivals and awakenings that the church has ever known. I think it's going to look like the Jesus people movement. I think it's going to look like the Azusa street revival. I think that all of these revivals that we have looked to in the past and been inspired by that God's going to almost mix those anointings of those revivals from the past and pour it out like one new fresh oil on his church and on his remnant. And I think that the world is going to start looking at the church for leadership to find out what's really going on in the world, to find out what they need, what their response needs to be. And I think that this is the time for the church to raise her voice, yeah. to not be silent, to not be afraid, but to be bold and to declare what God has spoken to us in the private place really boldly publicly. That is, that is so good. I'm, I'm just getting excited. Just listen to y'all. Now, you know, all preachers, all apostles and prophets, teachers and pastors, they've all got one or two messages that's just in their DNA. Why don't each of you just share a little bit about one or two of the messages? I could probably tell you what y'all are going to talk about, but yeah. could, could y'all just share a little bit about some of the, the messages that, that's just part of who you are? I think for me, especially because of the way that I kind of came into the kingdom, I want to see people really awaken to the real Jesus, not to a religious Jesus, not to religious duty, not to a Sunday morning service and a midweek service and maybe a corporate prayer meeting. I want to see people alive and awakened to who God really is, that he's a real man, that he's really in heaven, that his heart burns for the individual, that he gave up everything to have relationship with us. And, and my heart yearns to see people, lost people, people that have been bound in religion come alive to the real Jesus and to learn that he is more real than the ground that we stand on. He's more real than, than even um, just religious systems have tried to paint him out to be and that he's more radical and more um, world changing than we've given him credit for. And really to see people awaken to that and then step into their purpose that to move from the reality of knowing that God loves them and knows them and that he's real and that he's powerful and to start operating as sons and daughters and I love Romans 8 and we we quote this around here a lot but um, it says in the passion translation at the end of Romans 8 that the entire creation is standing on tiptoe to see the unveiling of the sons and daughters of God. And why would all of creation be waiting for that? Because 
the redemption yeah. of creation is locked up yeah. inside the sons yeah. and daughters of God. And I believe that it's time for us to unlock that and see God move in the earth. Yeah. I, I think for, for me, um, and I, I think we all know what it is. Mine is uh, God revives every single person for a reason. Mm -hmm. There is a reason and a purpose that he has revived each and every single one of us. Uh, when God touched me many years ago and, and poured out his spirit with, with not one person around, the Holy Spirit poured himself out upon me. And, and, and then I began to just pursue the presence of God with everything in me. And one day I was in, in one of the prayer services that we, we've done for years. And, and I remember hearing the Lord say, what I do in a man, I will do in the land. Mm -hmm. And that has, has marked me for many years because I know that, that he revives each one of us for the purposes that he, he means to establish on the earth. And uh, y'all know uh, my life chapter is, is ultimately Psalms 85 and the sons of Korah. And they, 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 were, they were on their, their yearly, yearly pilgrimage to, to go worship God. And they said, revive us, O God, that we would worship you. But on down in that text, they, they tell God to just, just release me of anything, uh, anything I've put foolish in myself anything that I've, I've looked at that was foolish or anything that i've done that was foolish but they 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 end with a statement that says surely salvation draws near to those who fear god that the glory of the lord would dwell in their land and i know that i always want to to see people and encourage people to to have that healthy fear of god mm -hmm. to see him come and move upon the earth revive each each person individually see the purposes of god come through them and us see the glory of the Lord fully dwell in our cities and our region and our state and our nation and ultimately even our world. Amen. Well, we love revival and prayer around war ministries. We're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to talk about creativity. I remember years ago when I felt I was supposed to write books, Jeff said, well, if you write it, I'll find a way to get it published. And so I didn't know what I was doing and it, it, we started writing books and he found out a way to get it published and then another one and then another one. And I'm not even sure how many books that I've written and that yeah. my wife and Michelle's written a book together. Um, Jeff and myself and Apostle Jenny Cooper's written one together. And then we've done a collaboration with our, our network, but I don't know how many different people Jeff has done websites and books for, and they have uh, just an amazing business that has the heart to help authors get their material out. So why don't you explain just y'all's heart behind the business and also how you can help people? I know when I travel, people say, oh, I want to write a book, but I have no idea what to do. I say, hey, look, your problems are solved. I've got some friends that they can get you finished. They can get your book. They can get your transcript. And they ask me questions. I say, I don't know the answer, but I can give you a number of somebody who does. So explain how you can turn people's dreams into a reality. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the first things with that, uh, talking about creativity, before McFarland Creative even started, uh, Joe and I were in a service, and there was a minister that was there ministering, and, and he was a, a prophetic voice in the nation, and he called me up, and he looked at me, and he said, I see a computer screen, and creativity is uh, the word that just keeps going, going over it, and he said something interesting, and this isn't to tout me, but it's to encourage you to continue to, to keep your hands on the plow and to to do what God's called you to do and give him your yes. And what, what he said to me is your years of service to the man of God and, and ultimately talking of my relationship with Joe and how we were uh, uh, helping him to continue to, to, to do everything that he's called to do. He said in that service, God is honoring that and he is pouring out creativity on you. And I didn't really understand it until McFarland Creative started to come to full fruition. And so uh, there were days where we, we didn't know how to uh, build websites. We didn't know how to do graphic design. We didn't know how to do uh, different uh, books. Just as Joe said, we didn't know how to do books when we first started on that. But there was, there was not only, there, it was twofold. There was a grace to it because we had said yes. And then also with that grace, there was a, a, an attitude that we're going to get it done no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so those two things together is what helped fuel McFarland Creative initially. And it, even still today, it's, it's that no matter what, if, if, if uh, we're going to continue to educate ourselves, we're going to continue to, to uh, hone our crafts, we're going to continue to 
uh, learn and expand our knowledge within the, the even the digital world because that's what McFarland Creative is, is known for and that's what we do. But even within that, we're continuing to going to be faithful to God and say yes every time He says, "I want you to step out in this area," because we we want to not only be known as as creative people, we want to be known as faithful people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that encapsulates what McFarland Creative is. And, and that's how uh, it came to be where we decided what we want to do as a business is the vision that you have over your ministry, the vision that you have over your business. If you've had a book, because most times when we talk to people about books, it's, it's I've had this book in me, I've had it written for three years, and I just don't know what to do with it. And we literally say, just send us the transcript and we can move you forward. So just send us your manuscript, just send it to us, uh, and we, we work out all the details, and then we move you from manuscript to, to full, we put, put in a full book into your hand. And that's just one of the examples of, of, of what we do uh, within business, because we, we not only want to see what God has placed inside us, just as we said earlier, we want to see what God's placed inside the body of Christ and help get that out and get it out to the world. Uh, because ultimately within all this, we've learned how to do that and we know how to do it and we want to help you do it. You know, I've heard two or three key prophets recently say that this is going to be a year that the books are written, that this is a year that God has wisdom inside of inside of people that need to get out. Wouldn't it be a shame to carry that book to the grave with you? So I just encourage people to to reach out to Jeff and Michelle because they can walk you through the process. Now, Michelle carries a strong word for women and Jeff carries a strong word for men. So I'm gonna have them each share um, just a word because Michelle, she's, a, she's an encourager and, and also she'll, she'll do it in love, but, but she'll get some of you ladies, she'll whip you in shape real quick and Jeff will do the same towards men, but they have a strong word in them. And so I'm just gonna release them just to share that. Well, women out there, I just want to encourage you not to be silent. And I had a, um, a mentor in my life in a past season that looked at me and just looked me dead in the face and said, don't ever let anyone intimidate you. And that has been just a fire lit underneath me to really come against intimidation. And I think obviously men also encounter that, but I think that it's a spiritual bully for women that the enemy would love nothing more than to intimidate women into being silent. He's used wrong theology for, for years and years to try to keep the women silent. He, he did it in biblical times. He's done it in, in uh, recent years, but I really believe that God is unleashing women in this hour, that he's calling us to not be intimidated, not be intimidated by man, not be intimidated by society and what society's um, pressures and molds and systems and not to be intimidated by the enemy. And, and I love that even in Genesis that the enemy knew who to come to, to intimidate and, and to manipulate. And it was the voice of the woman that he was after. And I love the curse that God puts on the serpent that he puts on Satan in Genesis. And it's that I will empower the woman to crush your head under her heel to the point where it'll bruise her heel and she will teach, she will hate you and she will teach her children to hate you. And so women, if you felt like you've been just spiritually bullied by intimidation, or you felt like you couldn't speak up, that you've been forced into silence, I want to empower you raise your voice. God has given the voice back to women and we can't do it alone. We need strong male leadership in our lives. I, I firmly believe that God has established men and women to partner together in order to advance the kingdom of God. So it's not an either or, it's a both and. And I just want to encourage you women, do not be silent and do not be intimidated. And I, th I think to encourage the men, I, I just encourage every man that's out there, be a kingdom established man in this hour. Be a kingdom man in this hour. See God's kingdom established, not only in this earth, but to let it be established in you. I want to encourage you be uh, three things. And this, this is what I've always told myself that, that I, I want to be as a man. I want to be a man of prayer. I want to be a man of presence. And I want to be a man of power. Those three things are, are, are what I have pointed my life towards because 
Um, just as I said, I want to be known as consistent and faithful because I think that's what helps helps bring the uh, the the power. That's what helps uh, continue to to show God that that you mean what you say. You mean that you 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 are a man of a business and you just want to see God do and establish work in you and, and do it in others, but be a man of, of one prayer, be found in the place of prayer. Let your family see, see you in the place of prayer, be one who prays no matter what be found in the presence of God and then uh, see his power established in you and then see his power established within others. Man, that is so powerful. We just love Jeff and Michelle. They're just uh, just a, a power couple you know, you can go to the Roar Church YouTube channel and they got a lot of messages on there. I mean, a lot of messages because they they speak a lot. And one thing that that we believe at our church is our church is many voices. It's numerous voices. It's not about, um, you know, one person. It's just about a lot of different people. And so I'm just so thankful that they're uh, running alongside us. And now what is the, the website that they can contact y'all? Because everybody's going to be wanting to book for long. Yeah, it's McFarland dash creative.com so you can you can see everything that, that we we do you can see some of the past things that we've done it'll connect you to us fill out any form there and uh, email us however you want to uh, connect with us within mcfarland dash creative.com all right well i want to thank everybody for watching and i want to thank jeff and michelle for being with us today and hope everybody has a blessed evening <laughs>